Hello there, my name is Branislav. Three years ago I was going through finding the one and the best microphone stage of my life, as we all do, right? And doing so I've got quite a few microphones, as you could see in the description of this video. And I thought before I start selling them, I could test them for you in case you were going through similar stage of your life, wasting money on the microphones you don't need. First though, please go and put on your headphones. You definitely need headphones to be able to hear the differences between those microphones. Also, after each mic, I'll go quiet so you can hear the self noise of each microphone. And now, 16 microphones in three and a half minutes. Now you are listening to Luvit LCT 540 large capsule condenser microphone, costing around 800 US dollars. Now you are listening to SE Electronic X1A, costing around 100 dollars. Now you are listening to Samsung Q2U, costing around 70 dollars, connected through XLR cable. And now again you are listening to Samsung Q2U connected directly through USB cable to S21 Ultra. Now you are listening to Shure SM35 connected wirelessly to this wireless system as it was intended. The whole wireless system was about 7 600 US dollars. The microphone itself would be about 100 Fifty dollars. And now you are listening to Shure SM35 connected to my portable recorder. Now you are listening to Shure WH20 costing around one hundred dollars. Now you are listening to over the ears head worn microphone meant for Sennheiser body packs, bought from China for fifteen dollars. Now you are listening to Rode Wireless Go inbuilt microphone costing around $200. Now you are listening to Lavalier microphone called Power Device costing around 30 or 40 US dollars. Now you are listening to Lavalier microphone which came with insanely long cable and brand really unknown for about 20 or 30 dollars. Now you are listening to a dynamic microphone Huxley bought in Aldi for 15 dollars including 3 meter long cable. And now you are listening to microphones of Mixerface R4 costing around 100 dollars. Now you are listening to Sony ZV-1's own inbuilt microphones at a distance of about one and a half feet or 40 centimeters. Now you are listening to S21 Ultra, rear microphones, pro mode, wide lens, arms, distance. S21 Ultra, ultra wide lens, pro mode, rear microphones, only about this far from the phone, improving the audio and the video qualities. Now you are listening to Sony WH-1000XM3 Bluetooth headphones costing around $300. Now you are listening to Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro 2020 model costing around $200. Now we are listening to Bluetooth earbuds Soundbeat True Capsule bought in 2020 for about 40 dollars. So which one of these microphones did you like the most? I personally love the Luit LCT 540 Sub-Zero, but it costs eight times as much as this SE Electronic X1A. And to be honest, I personally can't really hear much of a difference. And this microphone I can attach directly into my recorder, like this. Uh, 
another funny thing about it is that I didn't buy it, I found it. Somebody has thrown out some musical equipment and this microphone was lying there in a the dirt. I picked it up, cleaned it, washed it, dried it, put it all back together and, and it worked. And I think it sounds great. Can you hear the difference or much of a difference between Luit and SE Electronic? Let me know. As far as dynamic microphones go, if your room is not sound treated or you've got noise coming from the outside, Samsung Q2U for $70 cannot be beaten. XLR output, USB output and headphones output for audio monitoring. And this is how it sounds. By the way, if you are planning to connect it directly to your phone, as I'm going to do now, this microphone becomes quite hot or too sensitive and prone to clipping. I need to sit this far from it as opposed to before using XLR. If you want to go closer, you need to have a phone which lets you set the input levels and not all phones can do that. S21 Ultra can and I will switch to Pro Mode now and I will set it to minus 10 decibels and see what happens. And now I'm in the Pro Mode set to minus 12 decibels and as you can see I'm holding it much closer to my mouth and it does sound better. It also picks up less noise from the outside. I'm a little bit disappointed with the quality coming out of Shure SM35 and its wireless system. Considering how big it is and quite expensive. Also not very impressed with the range. It wouldn't even get through one wall. I had to bring it over here because in the living room it wouldn't pick it up. Tiny Road had no problem to go over two walls. Not sure what's going on there. And with the quality, I think maybe because it's meant for really loud environments, concerts and singing, not talking. So it better be good at rejecting background noise. I'm playing back noises of my computer running, fridge running, bathroom suction and me typing on the keyboard. And there is also a mouse somewhere there. This is how much of that noise SM35 picks up. This is how much noise of that SE Electronic X1A picks up. This is how much of that noise Samsung Q2U picks up. This is how much of that noise this tiny Chinese $15 microphone picks up. This is how much of that noise Road Wireless Go picks up. This is how much of that noise would Sony ZV-1 arms distance pick up. I'm personally quite impressed by the audio quality coming out of this tiny $15 microphone. For somebody who does streaming or even podcasting, it shouldn't really matter this little microphone. People are used to having a big microphones in front of their faces. Yes, the quality will never be as good as something like Samsung Q2U, for instance. But it's tiny. You can literally put it in your pocket. You can connect it straight into your camera. And if you set the correct levels, you might not have to touch that audio in post-production at all. As you can see, the distance between microphone and your mouth is more important than the quality and price of your microphone. Let me show you something. If you take the best microphone there is and you place it in the crappiest room there is, no pun intended, this is the audio you'll get. On top of that, if you place your microphone far away, and if your voice is naturally annoying like this, people will want to rip their ears out. Coming close to your microphone will make a difference but in a room like this, it'll still sound pretty bad. 
And now I have brought just one of my own acoustic panels into this bathroom. And as you can hear, it sounds completely different. Most of the reverb is gone. I'm making these myself, by the way, not the main board, just the frame and canvas on top. I'm back in my room and that beach tapestry behind my back is pinned to three of those acoustic panels, significantly improving the quality of this room, filling up pretty much the whole wall. You can also pin anything else to it, perhaps green screen. If everything goes according to plan, there will be a website called smartacousticpanels.com.au where if you live in Sydney, Australia, you can buy them. And that's it. If this was helpful in any way, please give me a like, drop me a comment, and I might see you sometime in the future. Bye.